Acculturation, Familism, and Depression, an Exploratory Study Among Latino Families, by myself, Roseanne Perez, Ph.D., Fordham University, and Beverly Araujo Dawson, MSW, Ph.D., Adelphi University. Latino adolescents have been described as having higher depressive symptom rates than white youth. This is a matter of concern considering that depressive symptoms can be a precursor for suicide. Latino immigrant youth have been found to have higher depression rates than non-immigrants. This may be due to the impact of immigration stressors, such as language barriers, acculturative stress, and discrimination. Immigrating to a new country exposes families to the process of acculturation, described as a phenomenon which result when groups of individuals having different cultures come into continuous first-hand contact with subsequent changes in the original cultural patterns of either or both groups. Family variables have emerged as a critical protective factor against psychological distress among adolescents. Family involvement has been conceptualized as representing a sense of connectedness and support as well as spending time with family. The present study draws on data from the Longitudinal Immigrant Student Adaptation Study called LISA and focuses on advancing the knowledge base by exploring the relationship between acculturation levels and depressive symptoms as well as the protective role of family involvement. According to the transactional stress model, stress develops as a result of the interaction between person and environment and is influenced by the resources available to individuals. Therefore, the experiences of immigrant youth can translate into stress depending on the appraisal of the event by the individual. Family involvement and family cohesion, distinguishing features of Latino families, could potentially buffer stress for Latino immigrant youth. This study focuses on the relationship between acculturation levels and family involvement on depressive symptoms while controlling for prior depressive symptoms and family demographics. We expect Latino youth who are bicultural to exhibit lower levels of depressive symptoms, whereas youth who are acculturated or enculturated to exhibit higher levels of depressive symptoms. Based on the literature, we also expect to find an inverse relationship between family involvement and depressive symptoms. The sample of this study consisted of 187 youth who self-identified as Latino in the LISA dataset. LISA was a five-year longitudinal study originating in 1997. Students were recruited from seven school districts in Boston and San Francisco with high densities of newcomer immigrant students. Participation in the study was limited to students who had arrived in the U.S. within five years of the study, lived in the U.S. for two-thirds of their lives, had one relative living nearby, and had at least one employed parent. Bilingual bicultural research assistants conducted one face-to-face -face interview during each of the five study periods. Interviews were conducted in the participant's language preference. Exploratory factor analysis was utilized to evaluate the factor structure of the depressive symptoms, acculturation and family involvement scales, and to select the items that would be included in the final scale. After deciding on the factor structure, the Cronbach Alpha internal consistency reliability coefficients were reviewed to determine the random error of the scale. Depressive symptoms were assessed using a 14-item psychological symptom scale based on a four-point Likert scale, with three indicating high rates of depressive symptoms and zero indicating no depressive symptoms. Participants were asked to respond to the prompt, lately do you feel worried or do you feel sad or do you lose your temper easily? Dep depressive symptoms were measured in years one and five and yielded reliability scores consistent with that of similar studies, 0.81 for year one and 0.85 for year five. Two acculturation subscales using variables from year one, similar to the bidimensional acculturation scale or the BAS, were developed. One measured orientation toward the country of origin, which is enculturation, and the other toward that of the host society, which is acculturation. Only the questions that demonstrated evidence of a common factor structure requiring a minimum factor loading of 0.35 in exploratory factor analysis were used. Enculturation was assessed through participants' ability to understand, speak, and read the country of origin, and likewise acculturation was determined by the, same, by the English language abilities. 
The proxy measure for family involvement, available only in year three of the study, was designed to capture the fulfillment of shared activities with parents or relatives, such as going to museums, going together to the library to borrow books, playing games, or ball. Based on the existing literature, several control variables were included. Depressive symptoms measured in year one, participants' age and educational attainment of each parent measured in year one, low income, time since arrival, sex, grade level, parental employment. The amount of missing data in the LISA subsample required the use of multiple imputation analysis to reduce the likelihood of spurious results. Multiple regression models were used to examine the explanatory impact of enculturation, acculturation, and biculturalism at year one, family involvement at year three, and controls for individual and family factors and depressive symptoms at year one on depressive symptoms at year five. Analysis were performed using SAS 9.1 and all p-values are two-sided. Standardized betas were calculated for each parameter estimate. The sample was made up of 60 Dominicans, 70 Mexicans, and 57 Central Americans. Although 60% had high acculturation scores in year one, the remainder had high enculturation scores. 40% of the sample reported being male, and at the beginning of the study, participants' average reported age was 11.6. Most were in sixth grade. The sample was primarily one of newcomers, averaging only 5.4 years in this country, and the sample's socioeconomic profile was rather low. In the results, Model 2 is the model of interest. Model 2 demonstrates that when family involvement is added to the model, depressive symptoms significantly decrease as expected. In this model, depressive symptoms in year 1 significantly though moderately affect depressive symptoms in year 5, allowing us to infer that Latino immigrant adolescents who experience prior depressive symptoms are more likely to continue experiencing depressive symptoms at later periods. In addition, participants reported sex was significantly and strongly related to depressive symptoms. In examining the relationship between acculturation levels and depressive symptoms, as well as the protective role of family involvement against ecological distress among Latino immigrant youth, unexpectedly the study found that acculturation levels were not significantly related to depressive symptoms, whereas lack of family involvement was associated with more depressive symptoms. Therefore, low family involvement, prior depressive symptoms, and being female, which were significantly negatively associated with depressive symptoms, appear to be risk factors for Latino immigrant youth. The relationship between lack of family involvement and greater rates of depression is not surprising, given that it resonates with Lazarus and Folkman's transactional stress model. According to this model, individuals that have the resources to cope with stressful stimuli may experience less stress. Also, the significant yet moderate effect size of prior depressive symptoms and later depressive symptoms suggests that there is a persistent quality to depression, which is consistent with the literature. These findings support the need for mental health interventions with adolescents in early to mid-adolescents, especially those from Latino background, who have been shown to have higher depression rates than their white counterparts. Finding that gender played a role in the relationship with depressive symptoms is also consistent with extant literature. Latinas have consistently been found to have higher depression rates than males. To explain this gender discrepancy, researchers have suggested that female adolescents may internalize stereotypes and sexual socialization regarding gendered behavior in ways that relate negatively with depression. The interview questions varied from year to year, and this limited our ability to evaluate all of the measures during the same time periods or to see how they varied over time. Acculturation was available in year one, and family involvement was available in year three, yet depression was only available in years one and five. Thus, it is difficult to ascertain whether students' increased preference for English between year one and five interviews could be related to significant shifts in acculturation. 
Five years is a relatively short time in which to find significant differences, and perhaps future studies would do well to study acculturation patterns over a longer period of time. Also, the low number of participants in some of the Latino subgroups limited our ability to look at Latino groups separately. We could not effectively subdivide the groups without compromising the analysis. In summary, this study's findings contribute to the literature on this important topic. Depressive symptoms among members of Latino families can be chronic, serious, and burdensome to the entire family. Depressive symptoms are rapidly growing among Latinos, and girls are at higher risk. To contribute to positive mental health outcomes, practitioners working with Latino youth and families are advised to employ culturally relevant interventions that incorporate the family. Gracias por escuchar. Thank you for listening.